This is Puerto Rico on a calm night in July 2017. Here it is again after Hurricane Maria in September. The storm's impact has been catastrophic. It was at its strongest when it was passing over the most populated parts of the island, which is home to about 3.4 million people. It knocked off Puerto Rico's power grid, and now it'll be months before most of the island has electricity again. And what's made recovery particularly hard is that the government has no money. That's partly because of its complex relationship with the U.S. mainland. Puerto Rico became a U.S. Commonwealth in 1952. But nearly half of all Americans don't know that people born in Puerto Rico are U.S. citizens. The island's economic downturn can be traced back to the 1960s and 70s, when a special tax break from Congress led U.S. companies to set up shop in Puerto Rico. Then, between 1993 and 2006, Congress phased out those tax breaks, and companies left the island in droves, taking thousands of jobs with them. Economic growth slowed to a crawl, and hordes of people started leaving the island. The number of Puerto Ricans living in the U.S. mainland doubled between 2005 and 2015. And as the tax base shrank, Puerto Rico went into massive debt to pay its bills. Today, it owes more than $70 billion, mostly to Wall Street creditors. In May of 2017, the island filed for protection similar to bankruptcy. Budgets for hospitals, schools, and roads were slashed. Another U.S. policy that led to Puerto Rico's economic turmoil is the Merchant Marine Act of 1920, or the Jones Act. It places huge tariffs on any foreign imports. Although President Trump suspended the Jones Act in the wake of Hurricane Maria, those costs have been passed down to Puerto Ricans for decades. Since Puerto Rico imports 84% of its food, people there often pay double what they would on the mainland for basic necessities. The high cost of living is one of the reasons 43% of residents live in poverty. Crucially, the island's financial woes have kept it from investing in the kind of modern, automated power plant technology that's characteristic of the mainland U.S., and that's going to make recovery difficult. Most power plants on the mainland rely on natural gas, with some coal, nuclear, and renewables. But Puerto Rico's old-fashioned plants still generate two-thirds of their power from burning oil, and all that oil has to be imported. In the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, the power plants are mostly intact, but nearly 80% of the transmission lines that carry power are down, and so are the roads that bring oil to the power plants. While the island's power plants are on the southern coast, most people live in the north, and between those two sit dense forests and mountains. Apart from the challenging terrain, Puerto Rico's electric utility company, Prepa, relies heavily on workers with extensive knowledge, and those workers have been leaving. Since 2012, 30% of Prepa's employees have retired or left for the mainland in search of better jobs. Electrical engineers from Puerto Rico can make about 27% more money on the U.S. mainland. According to its director, Prepa is on the verge of collapse because there's no personnel to operate it. And that was before the storm. Without technicians to repair all of these broken transmission lines, Puerto Ricans are expected to be without power for months. And the consequences could be dire. Without electricity to pump water into homes, it's difficult to find clean water for drinking and bathing. No air conditioning or fans can mean increased risk of heat stroke. And without refrigeration to keep insulin and other drugs from expiring, people are at risk of death. All of this means that millions of U.S. citizens, for the foreseeable future, will be living in conditions that we usually associate with places very far away. <laughs> 